Hello and welcome to Kingston Now. I'm Jimmy Buff. Four years ago, there was a dramatic three-way race for Ulster County District Attorney. When the dust had settled, Republican Holly Carnwright emerged as the victor and has served as DA since January of 2008. Hoping to change that is John Sennett, one of the three candidates from last time around, who joins us on Kingston Now. Hi, John. Jimmy, thanks for having me very much. Our pleasure. So, so what have you been up to for the last four years? Well, I have continued to practice law here in the Hudson Valley and beyond, uh, focusing mainly on criminal law, criminal defense, as well as uh, family court, uh, family law cases. What made you say, I'm going to take another shot at this? Well, I, uh, I've, I've watched very closely the work in the Ulster County DA's office, and I still feel that the people of Ulster County can do better, uh, that the, uh, the office really needs someone who is going to be aggressive in fighting crime, uh, violent crime, uh, particularly gang-related violence. We need someone who's going to be a leader not only in the courtroom, but also in the community. And from what I've seen in the past four years, we don't have that, and I feel quite strongly that I can do better. We'll talk about specifics about that in just a moment, but tell us your background. Sure. Well, I am a former assistant district attorney in Bronx County. I started my career prosecuting violent felonies, and uh, I also managed a team of 20 assistant district attorneys down in the Bronx. And uh, when I moved to a senior trial bureau, I was handling cases, uh, you know, stabbings, shootings, robbery, burglary, assault, murder. Um, I also uh, taught trial training at the New York City Police Academy, and I helped instruct assistant DAs down in the Bronx to uh, essentially bring work from the street, uh, law enforcement work, into success in the courtroom. Um, I have over 17 years of uh, courtroom experience, both as a trial lawyer and, a, and an appellate lawyer. And uh, I've also, I've worked as an asbestos litigator, and I have uh, been in the Hudson Valley practicing law for the last nine years. And it's during that period of time that I've focused on criminal and family law cases. I've been um, living in New Paltz last 11 years with my wife and my, my two young daughters, and uh, practicing now in Uptown Kingston, uh, just really, again, trying to uh, trying to serve the community as best I can. I also I have served on the board of the Queen's Galley, uh, which you may be familiar with as a food insecurity resource uh, organization. And I've also served on, on, uh, on uh, other boards, uh, such as the Town of New Paltz Environmental Conservation Commission, and I've uh, been on a reentry program board as well. So for Ulster County DA, not only do you think you can do a great job, but you think you can do a better job than the incumbent. Can you say why? Sure. Well, w first of all, again, I believe that the district attorney's office requires a strong leader, uh, someone who's going to be able to not only help train uh, the members of that office, but also to supervise them well, someone with a vision for interacting in the community, uh, a DA who's going to be responsive to the needs of the community in a way that does more than just wait for the cases to come walk in the door. And I think that um, a past... Well, let, let me... What, what does that mean? Well, I think, first of all, you know, past administrations of the Ulster County DA's office, the DA has uh, gone out and met with members of the community, uh, members of the clergy, community leaders on a regular basis, and we have not seen that uh, in the current administration. I think that's an integral part of law enforcement. I think that you need to be able to listen to the needs of the community so that you can figure out how to allocate resources. What we've seen in the last four years I have respect for the office of the district attorney. I have respect for the individual who holds it right now. Uh, but I feel that we can do better, and, and unfortunately, I think what we've seen is uh, mismanagement. We've seen mismanagement of the office itself. Uh, we have seen mismanagement in terms of public integrity uh, and the way that, uh, that government uh, officials are dealt with from the DA's office, and I think that we've seen a mismanagement of the public's trust and reliance on the integrity both of the district attorney's office and then uh, of the criminal justice system. You're watching Kingston Now. More with the Democratic candidate for Ulster County DA, John Sennett, when we return. Welcome back to Kingston Now. We're talking with candidate for Ulster County District Attorney John Sennett, and we continue the conversation. 
John, so let's talk about public integrity. What are your issues with the current DA? Well, you know, we have seen in the past few years, uh, in, under this administration, we've had the tail end of the jail debacle. Uh, which ended with uh, no successful prosecution and uh, the DA refusing to appeal the judge, both dismissing the case and therefore sealing the grand jury's report. Now we're talking about major cost overruns in the b building of the Ulster County Jail and thinking that there was something more to it than just people not getting it done on time. Well, absolutely, and there was one charge that was levied, and the DA did issue summaries of reports, but in a very unusual instance, the grand jury issued a report. Normally, uh, the grand jury will just file, file charges. Uh, in this instance, they filed a report. That was sealed along with the charge being dismissed by the county court. Now, the DA could have appealed that, and he chose not to. So that's my first problem there in terms of public integrity is clearly the DA demonstrated a, a, a disinterest uh, in, uh, in keeping the, having the public's back. Uh, we've had the Resource Recovery Agency mismanagement. Again, the comptroller uh, suggests to the district attorney to engage in an investigation. He was very hesitant and then ultimately uh, passed it off to the Attorney General's office. The Attorney General is not the corporate parent of the district attorney's office. It's a separate law enforcement entity statewide. We've seen the Department of Health scandal, uh, where again, the comptroller lays an investigation at the DA's feet, the finding of over $30,000 in uncashed checks in the safe before the former head of the department was dismissed. The DA chose not to investigate it. But I think the most notable and the most disturbing is the uh, case that has come out of the investigation into former Police Lieutenant Timothy Matthews. Um, this is where mismanagement and a failure to keep an eye on taxpayer money has done the most damage. And it's revealed the most about what's wrong in the DA's office. Now, we're familiar with the allegations of double dipping in terms of pay from the Kingston Police Department and the Kingston School District that were, uh, this is what started the investigation. Then it was discovered that the lieutenant allegedly stole $9,000 from an evidence safe. But then it is further discovered that in the course of conducting what we call confidential investigations, when they do a buy and bust, they want to uh, try to arrest drug dealers, they buy drugs and they do that with our money, taxpayer dollars. And it is there that we see, uh, first of all, this district attorney uh, signed vouchers himself for approximately $10,000 to Lieutenant Matthews. Uh, I have asked for the DA to recuse himself from the case. He feels that he doesn't need to do that, um, which I find unusual because he's avoided prosecution of public integrity matters so, uh, so specifically and so consistently, all of a sudden he wants to remain in the case. Well. Aside from the vouchers, we have this issue of the protocols, the rules for handling the money. When it came to the attention of the comptroller of this county, the comptroller indicated that he was going to cease approval of confidential investigative funds. Now, the sheriff's department was affected by this and the DA's office. The comptroller basically said, show me what your rules are and what your internal protections are for handling this money, because it's that money that Lieutenant Matthews is accused of stealing. Well, after determining that there were not sufficient protocols in place, the comptroller shut off the funds. Now, the Sheriff's Department, they issued written protocols almost right away, about a week and a half later. The district attorney did not. The district attorney refused to issue written protocols. Now, it's my understanding that it was not until late in September approximately six months later, that the DA finally issued protocols. So what that means is that the Comptroller's office has not been approving confidential investigative funds for six months to the DA's office. So first of all, that leads me to wonder, why is it that the DA's office avoided providing protocols that the Sheriff's Department was able to provide successfully, I might add, in less than two weeks? That's the first question that disturbs me immensely. But another problem that I have in this is, how have they been financing their, their confidential investigations? Now, it's my understanding uh, that one of the ways that they've been doing this is what we would refer to as off-book accounts. Uh, late in the summer, again, the Comptroller issued a, a press release indicating that they had discovered what we would call these off-book accounts, accounts held by a government agency like the DA's office that do not fall under the watch of the Commissioner of Finance. Now, essentially, they're operating these secret bank accounts. Um, I don't know where that money came from. 
Uh, we, the people, I think, have a right to know, and we, and we still don't know. Uh, wherever that money has come from, wherever it has been going, uh, it has not yet been revealed to the controller as I understand it. You know, furthermore, initially when they discovered the money, they were deposited in, in illegal accounts. They were not in uh, municipal depository banks. In other words, you have to be a specifically approved type of, lend of deposit institution to be able to hold government money. These are our taxpayer dollars, and they are not being watched by this district attorney. John Sennett, the election is just a couple weeks away. We wish you good luck. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks very much, Jimmy. This is Kingston Now. Next up, we'll hear from the man John Sennett hopes to unseat, current Ulster County District Attorney Holly Carnwright. Stay with us. You're watching Kingston Now. This week, we're meeting the candidates for Ulster County District Attorney's Office. And with us now is the current DA, Holly Carnwright. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Ali, can you tell us what the function of the district attorney's office is? Our primary function is to prosecute crime. When um, we set up a criminal justice system a long time ago, we decided here in New York State that it would be important to have a local prosecutor. There are many states and many jurisdictions that have uh, broader based prosecutions. For instance, in the western states, they have a statewide prosecutor. Here in New York State, um, the people decided that they wanted to have a local prosecutor and they created a law which establishes the jurisdiction of one individual, the district attorney in each county, uh, that has the authority to prosecute crime. So the first thing that we do, our, our primary function is to prosecute people who commit crimes. You started your career as an assistant district attorney in Ulster County? I did. And you did that for about 10 years, is that right? More, closer to five years. Um, okay. I was hired out of uh, law school uh, by a guy named Mike Cavanaugh. Uh, and became his chief assistant uh, district attorney pretty quick, about a year and a half, and worked with uh, uh, now Judge Kavanaugh, uh, trying a lot of pretty um, heavy cases. It was a, a, a very interesting experience for a young attorney. I went from there. I went into uh, becoming an assistant public defender, and I worked with my dad. My dad was an attorney in Sargates, and for about 25 years, I had a private practice. Um, did a lot of work in family court and Supreme Court, uh, but I wanted to maintain my presence in the criminal justice system, and I was an assistant public defender uh, for about 25 years. Uh, and then more recently, I uh, ran for office and um, has been elected the district attorney. What, what brought you back to this side of the table? Well, it's an interesting question. Um, I, was, um, I was actually out of town, uh, and a couple of things happened which were pretty interesting, one of which is that the district attorney, which I think most people assumed he would run again, very popular, uh, very uh, successful district attorney, and for whatever reason he decided not to run. And when I got back um, from uh, this brief vacation, people called and said, would you be interested in running? And I promptly said no. <laughs> uh, I was very uh, content in what I was doing. I enjoyed um, the, my practice. I frankly had a successful uh, law practice. Uh, and people uh, talked to me, and, and actually I had a breakfast one time with um, a couple of uh, influential people, and they started to push the right buttons about service and, and service to your community and things like that, and I said, okay, I'll run, and uh, so I did. Is an election your least favorite part of this job? Absolutely, yeah. Because it can get kind of, you know, it can get kind of contentious, and John Sennett, who is running against you, has um, sort of, you're running on your record, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, but he seems to be running on your record, too and he's raised these issues of what he calls public integrity. Mm -hmm. How does that, how do you respond to that? Well, uh, in a broad sense, the, the first question is, uh, is it much fun to do, and the answer is no. I, I'm, uh, to be honest with you, I'm quite proud of my record. Uh, I think I have one of the best district attorney's offices in the state. Um, our conviction rate is phenomenal. Our relationship with the police agencies is, is really extraordinary. I think I've done all the things that I promised I would do when I ran. Uh, and I was hoping uh, that the voters would have a chance to look at the two candidates and compare them. Uh, we're pretty different. Uh, John's approach to, um, to criminal justice is a lot different than mine. Uh, his platform when he ran four years ago was um, a quite, in my judgment, a, a liberal platform, and, which is fine. Uh, I'm a, a little bit more conservative. Uh, and I think that's a nice contrast and a chance for the voters to take a look and make a decision. Um, unfortunately, the campaign has turned into a different type of campaign. Um, that is not as, um, I think, informative to the, to the uh, voting public, uh, and certainly it's not, um, not much fun. But it's, it's part of the process. I accept that. Well, he's made specific allegations in, in instances of the Timothy Matthews case of not recusing yourself. Mm -hmm. um, how do you respond to that specifically? Okay. So the Tim Matthews case is a situation for the people who aren't uh, familiar with it. 
Uh, Tim Matthews is a, um, a former detective lieutenant um, in the Kingston Police Department, uh, and he's been indicted for a, a fairly serious uh, series of larcenies from different accounts that he had access to. It, it, it seemed ironic to me when, when um, my opponent first came out and said that he thought it was inappropriate that it would be prosecuting Tim Matthews, and I, I couldn't disagree more. I think it's exactly what the people put me here to do. It's, uh, uh, no one knows the case better than I do. No one knows the circumstances better than I do. Uh, I've never shied away from, from a tough case. I'm certainly not going to shy away from this one. This is Kingston Now. We will wrap up our conversation with Ulster County District Attorney Holly Carnwright next. Welcome back to Kingston Now. And with this is the Ulster County DA, Holly Carnwright. Another one of John Sennett's assertions is the issue of protocols uh, regarding the issuance of money for uh, uh, you know, drug operations for the police and for the district attorney's office. And um, he laid out a pretty strong case early in the show about things that he thought that your office hadn't done properly. Can you address those? I know you've heard them before. Well, um, I don't want to talk too much about specific protocols in the office. I can only say that um, the gentleman that handles that for me uh, has over 30 years experience in the criminal justice system including 25 years in the FBI where he handled just this type of thing. Uh, I am, I've been around a little bit too, I've had about 30 years and between the two of us we have a very specific protocol uh, which has been in place in the office um, and it was in place uh, long before we dispersed any money um, that has been discussed. Um, there are, the, the protocols follow the FBI and DCJS protocols. The allegation apparently was that um, that these protocols were not reviewed with the comptroller. Uh, that's just a patently fa false statement. Uh, uh, Elliot and his assistant, uh, Laura Walls, uh, sat in uh, Bill's office with me. We opened up the books. We showed him what we had. Any questions, any concerns, any problems, uh, whatever you need, let us know. Come back and audit the numbers if you want. Um, we actually recommended uh, under the federal statutes um, or protocols, they, rec they um, audit money like this on a 30-day basis. Um, I, I don't know where this, this whole thing is coming from. It's just, it's, it's simply an uh, inaccurate statement on his part. We have uh, never met before today in person, but we've met via email because shortly after you <coughs> got elected, I'm the afternoon host and program director for Radio Woodstock 100.1. You sent us an email about a song that you heard on the radio that was uh, written and recorded 40 years ago, but in today's context, seemed to be misogynistic and promoting, uh, promoted violence against women uh, in, in particular. And that goes to an issue that's very important to you. Can you talk about your domestic violence stuff? Yeah, I, I, and I, I hope you didn't take offense by that. Uh, you know, I, you were I, right, I, I actually. didn't mean any offense. We, you, were, you were right, and we didn't need to be playing that song. The, the, um, the timing of it um, was that we had a, a, a terrible case where uh, a man um, killed his wife um, and then himself, and um, your, you know, the worst case scenario for domestic violence. And the the woman um, happened to be a, a woman who had worked in the school district, and um, I was concerned that uh, the song, which may have been heard by a number of her students, um, was um, was poignant enough that they may have um, uh, reacted to it. In, and and that's all. I didn't mean I didn't mean to uh, censure. <laughs> it's okay. Everyone's, anyway. a <laughs> yeah, Everyone's a program director. Yeah, there you go. Everyone's a program director. But domestic violence is one of the major platforms um, that that I have run on. Uh, I'm, I, I'm. It's it's um, it's an area in Ulster County that needs our attention. Uh, a couple of broad stroke statistics: uh, uh, two years ago, two years ago, um, domestic violence made up 3.5 percent of our adult arrests. Uh, last year, it was 9 percent. Uh, domestic violence incidents have increased over 100 percent in the past six years. Uh, and it's something that w there's, there's just a call to take care of. Um, many of the most dramatic cases, the saddest cases that I've worked on personally are domestic violence cases. Uh, in fact, we're doing a training um, next week on domestic violence and my assistant uh, and I are putting together a, a, an introductory PowerPoint presentation for um, the officers that are going to come in. And as I sat and looked at the photographs and the 911 and listening to the 911 calls, I've been reminded, uh, graphically reminded, of how um, serious domestic violence is here in, in Ulster County. 
So we've taken um, we've taken a very aggressive approach on it. Um, we've gotten a little help from the legislature recently. We got a, a new statute called the uh, Obstruction of Breathing uh, Statute. Uh, it's going to enable us to um, to do a better job at protecting victims. And, and that, that's violence. just to illustrate that that's because oftentimes in instances of domestic violence, one partner will grab the other by the throat, which prior to this statute wasn't really, you had a hard time prosecuting that. Yeah, it, it's, it's uh, about 65 percent of women who are victims of domestic violence are choked. Before the statute was passed, um, they, they looked at domestic violence um, really too much focus on physical injury. And domestic violence is much broader than physical injury. Domestic violence really is about uh, intimidation. It's about fear. Uh, it's, it's really, uh, it's, it's about control. And the stories that I could tell you, we don't have time to go into and maybe your audience wouldn't appreciate. Um, but this statute recognizes that domestic violence is much broader than leaving a mark or, or causing a physical injury. And it gave us the, the ability now to prosecute people um, without, on, on very serious cases, um, without um, having to show uh, a lasting injury. And um, I have never been choked, but I can only imagine um, the fear and the intimidation if a person chokes you to a point where you lose consciousness. And, and that statute addresses that. Um, and we've actually already had a number of prosecutions based on that. We'll have our first felony prosecution based on that new statute coming up in about two weeks. Holly Carnwright, thanks for joining us today. My pleasure. The general election is Tuesday, November 8th, and as the primaries for mayor in Kingston showed, every vote counts. We'd like to thank both John Sennett and Holly Carnwright for being on the show today. For more information on either candidate, you can go to senateforda.com or carnwrightforda.com, and both men have Facebook pages too. For Kingston Now, I'm Jimmy Buff. See you next time.